Hello world, welcome to the Gadget Flow podcast. This show is all about everything gadgets, products, and crowdfunding. This week we have Narek Vardanyan on the show and he is a total legend when it comes to crowdfunding. His most recent campaign raised nearly $2 million, just to give you some context. So this episode is really practical and he gives some amazing pointers when it comes to having a successful crowdfunding campaign. So without further ado, here is our interview with Narek Vardanyan. Okay, so I am here with Narek. Narek, how are you doing, man? Good, good. Thanks for having me in here. Absolutely. We're, we are so excited to have you um, on the Gadget Flow podcast. And um, you have quite the resume when it comes to crowdfunding. And I would love if you would give our listeners just a brief overview of what it is you do, a few of your your biggest projects, a few of the things you're working on currently, just to get to know, get to know you a little bit. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Well, I'm in crowdfunding industry for more than three years. Um, I have a crowdfunding training called the Winners Program. I had more than 300 participants in there. Uh, and recently with, uh, with our agency, the Crowdfunding Formula, we started to support campaigns to succeed in the crowdfunding. Mm. We have participated in, I guess, more than 50 campaigns, uh, 50 successful campaigns. And uh, a couple of our last campaigns were uh, Volterman, where we raised like close to $2 million. Mm -hmm. uh, we had The Moon, where we raised more than $400,000, etc. Yeah, so basically we are like a, a full service crowdfunding agency where we provide uh, crowdfunding support uh, uh, to all, the, all those people who have these very creative ideas. Awesome. Yeah, man, like um, looking through your portfolio of your work, it's super, super impressive. Um, so today I am going to take the opportunity to just ask you um, a few questions I've had for a long time about crowdfunding, kind of really on the more practical side of how to how to be better at it, because it's such a, you know, it can be a really crowded space. So I feel like you, you've become an expert in how to really stand out in the crowd. Um, and so, so the first question I wanted to ask you was what exactly can make a campaign stand out? Um, like just last year, for example, with the, the Volterman wallets on Indiegogo, I mean, you, you reached $2 million or, or nearly $2 million. And I'm just curious about how you made that wallet, um, stand out from the crowd. Like, what is it about that, um, that, that made it stand out and, and how did you approach that campaign specifically? Right, right. Well, um, first of all, first of all, it all starts from the product. So mm. the product itself needs to be exceptional. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. we're starting the Volterman campaign, uh, like the first prototype or the first version of the of the wallet was only the wallet uh, that has a power bank and a Bluetooth alarm system in it. Mm. And with a quick research, we we understood that with this functionality, it will not be exceptional. And we we we, we may not make this an exceptional campaign. So what we did, we started to work on the product itself. We started to improve it. We looked at the market and uh, we tried to analyze what function functionality like uh, currently all people want. And basically we added a couple of really cool features like a global GPS tracking, a camera that photographs the thieves, a Wi-Fi, global Wi-Fi of hotspot, etc., etc. So we made the product really, really good one. And we paid a lot of attention on design. And finally, it was ready for the, for the crowdfunding. And when we had a really good product, we understood that this is something that can, can be like uh, overcome everybody in the market. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that, that, uh, that is the most important thing in, when we are speaking about crowdfunding is the preparation. So most people fail in this stage, and this is why the success rate is so low now in crowdfunding. It's, it's I guess, less than 30% now. So 70% of, of people who go to crowdfunding basically fail to, to, to raise the money he wants. Right. And the, the main reason for that is preparation. Uh, we put a really uh, a lot of time and resources on our preparation activities. We have prepared more than four to five months, I guess, to the campaign 
uh, and basically that was uh, that was something that uh, that that drove us to to success and uh, we became the most funded wallet campaign ever in crowdfunding industry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that was actually my next question was I I feel like and I've I've been a part of a couple crowdfunding uh, things in the past and I've had a lot of friends go for it. And I do, I do feel like the, the key is how you prepare, just like you're saying. And I've seen him do great and I've seen him bomb, you know, <laughs> I've seen him fail too. Yeah. Um, and so maybe if you could give like, you don't have to give a, a, a huge amount of information, but even just a little tip on like, what is preparing successfully look like for someone? Like when, yeah. when, when they're starting, um, this campaign or when they're thinking about crowdfunding, like what are a few ways that they could prepare well for it? Yeah. 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 Um, well, I differentiate three main dimensions that uh, one should pay attention in the preparation stage. Yeah. So first of all, that's the video, uh, then collecting subscribers and then the PR part. Mm. So uh, we, we will address like each one separately and I'd try to give a couple of hints on how to win in each, each of these dimensions. Well, basically your video should be really cool. Like uh, this is nothing new, but, uh, but it really works if you have a viral video and people want to share it. Mm. So uh, we, we really paid a lot of attention on our video. We, uh, we tried to uh, underline some messages which we uh, were using a couple of times in the video to make it memorable. Uh, we're trying to make the video a cool uh, a video that people really would like to share. And we got overall more than, I guess, uh, more than 200 million views on our video, like overall, when we are com- comparing all the Facebook pages that uh, that shared our video. Wow. So this is a really, really, really cool way yeah, uh, to, drove, to drive traffic to your campaign page. Uh, and, and in here, if you have a really cool video, uh, you can approach to uh, Facebook pages who have, uh, like a big number of likes and, uh, you can address them to, to share your video in their page. Uh, here's a pro hint in here on how to succeed. Uh, you can, you can pay a couple of pages to share your video and uh, guarantee you, uh, like a million view. Yeah. There are these kind of pages that, that give you this kind of service. And then what you should do, you should just take this post and uh, approach to other pages and say, well, you know, I have this uh, viral video which raised uh, like million views in this page and you can share it too and, and get, uh, get, get this engagement, etc., cetera, et cetera. Sure. And this really works. Yeah. So uh, what we did, we have a, like a big team of, of four to five people who were uh, bombarding all the Facebook pages with our video. And uh, as a result, I think we got covered in most of the biggest Facebook pages out there. So, yeah, this is, this is about video that, uh, you did, that need to be viral and you need to address the key messages very, uh, like, carefully in the video. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then the other aspect is subscribers. So basically, subscribers is one of the most important elements or factors that uh, drive success to the crowdfunding campaigns. And uh, what typically successful campaigns are doing, and, and we also did that, is that we uh, create a landing page and start to collect subscribers, start to drive traffic via Facebook to this landing page and try to collect as much subscribers as we can. Okay. So in here, in here to uh, extend the number of subscribers and make it more effective, you should use uh, referral programs, uh, which will, um, which will uh, uh, help or... Um, which will help the, the existing subscriber base to bring additional subscribers to your, to your campaign. Like uh, we're using uh, two referral tools on our landing page. Okay. Uh, one is called App Viral. So basically when a person is subscribed, a pop-up appears which says, if you bring five more of your friends, uh, you will participate in a free giveaway. Yeah. Ah, and, okay. uh, 20, yeah. So And 20% of our subscribers uh, really did. Like uh, they invited their friends and basically with this way we almost doubled our subscriber base wow and then and then uh, prior to launch when we already had uh, more than 20,000 subscribers in our list what we did we sent uh, this tool that i really love it's called q uh, yeah so uh, oh yes, yes, yes this, i've heard of this yeah 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 this is a great tool which makes all these referral contests like very interactive and i really like recommend to use that 
So we send out an email to our list, which says, so basically you can compete with each other, uh, with each other, bring more people to, to, to this content page and the winner will get like a free wallet and the first five uh, places will get, I don't know, free uh, wireless charger, etc., etc. So basically this was one of the incentives also to, uh, to increase uh, our subscriber list. Another, another pro hint I can give in here is that uh, you know, the most accessible reward in our case uh, was uh, was engraving, like engraving to the wallet. Right. So basically, basically, where people were winning this engraving, uh, engraving itself, like, is not uh, is there's not value in there. Yeah. So basically, you should buy a wallet or bake a bake a project in order to get your reward. So this is a this is a kind of mechanism uh, to incentivize. You, all your winners to become your bakers so you can give them a reward uh, which is not uh, which doesn't have any value without your core product mm-hmm. so that they come they come and bake your project yeah so this is this is what we did with the subscribers and we got really a uh, big number of subscribers prior our launch um, and then another thing is the PR we paid really uh, good attention on on PR we started collecting uh, emails of journalists uh, who wrote previously about wallets, uh, and we were using some tools to to get uh, the emails of journalists, and uh, had a really big list uh, prior to our launch. So we had like uh, more than five thousand, I guess, uh, emails of journalists who wrote an article about like smart wallets, wallets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, they were targeted contact. And uh, when we started our campaign and uh, with the subscribers, we raised uh, really, uh, we, we raised all our goal at, the, at that time, like $45,000, we raised in one day. Mm. Uh, and then we started to approach all these uh, all these PR contacts because we already had the credibility of a good campaign. Uh, and we started to approach like almost one by one without spamming to all the journalists and trying to pitch them, to convince them to write about us. And yeah, it again worked, and uh, we got covered in many big, uh, big media and medium, and I think more than one thousand media coverage. Wow! Yeah, this is like kind of a brief uh, snapshot of how it looks like the preparation uh, to the campaign. No, man. I mean that that information is so <laughs> that's like gold. That's so valuable. <laughs> so helpful. Um, yeah, and, and I mean one thing too, and the next question I have for you is kind of. A, like the biggest thing I've seen when it comes to crowdfunding um, and a lot of issues I've seen with it, it's like, I think that everyone gets a really strong start and they have a really strong ending. But I was curious if you had any tips for, for us on like how to make that middle section, um, like how to keep momentum throughout the middle of your campaign, as well as the beginning and end of it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you are absolutely right. That's the biggest issue for most of the campaigns. And they they have this big start and big ending, but in the middle, they just absolutely don't know what to do. Right. So, uh, so, so here's, here's the secret. <laughs> Basically, it again comes from the preparation. If you have a big list of journalists, uh, like as I said, uh, more than one, more than 5,000, uh, it will take some time to pitch to everybody. So uh, pitching to all these journalists, not only the top ones, uh, a lot of people do these mistakes when, they're, when they target to only journalists from like TechCrunch, from Measurable, from CNET, etc., etc. But they don't uh, take into account that there are a lot of websites which maybe nobody uh, heard about them, but they will give you like a lot of convertible traffic. Right. So you need to, you need to uh, secure yourself also with these middle and small websites. Uh, to keep the momentum mm. so basically we started to pitch actively all the websites like both medium and small ones as well uh, we um, we actively used this facebook pages trick as i told you like uh, we started to pitch them with our video and started to get traffic from from uh, from biggest facebook pages out there which actively shared our video um, uh, we, we started to dig uh, and, uh, uh, and approach to websites which uh, bring convertible traffic. And, and here's where we, we got the gadget flow as well. Mm-hmm. Like we got a really, really big and, and uh, good traffic from, from the gadget flow. I think we raised uh, more than $11,000 only, only from gadget flow. 
Wow. So this was one of one of the best websites, I would say, that uh, that provided very convertible and relevant traffic to our page. That's awesome. And and yeah, and and this is this is basically the secret. Like you should work uh, the whole time. Like as as they say in football, the uh, the game is ninety minute, <laughs> not mm-hmm. not less. So right. so you should you should work out uh, on it fully. And uh, start to pitch everybody uh, which which you think uh, is ha- ha- can have a relevant audience for your for your campaign. So things things get a lot easier if you are well prepared. So you have a big list, big number of websites, uh, which will be enough for thirty days or or something uh, to to pitch. And they keep you they they help you to keep the momentum. Yeah, I, I think that is that's spot on. Like in my thinking, like, yeah, if you prepare well and if you have this huge list of potential people to, to promote your your crowdfunding campaign and if you kind of like spread it out over the month and maybe, you know, you put a little bit more behind the arrow at the beginning and end of the month. I think that's natural for a launch. But if you kind of have it prepared to where throughout the month you're you're uh, you're really, you know, giving that out to a lot of different people to promote that'll keep your momentum high, which is really, really, yeah. really smart. So, exactly. um, so my next question is, okay, so you, you've had a super successful campaign. Everything's gone to plan. You've, you, you know, you've gone way over and above and something I've seen time and time again is campaigns almost becoming completely dismantled, um, after it's all over because, uh, they didn't prepare well with their incentives. Um, I've seen like so many people lose money on their Kickstarter and so many things like that, or their Indiegogo's, whatever, because their incentives are are not uh, well thought through. So, do you have any tips on how, on how to um, you know ins- be create incentives that are not just uh, amazing value for your customer, but also won't you know, break you down on the back end of your campaign? Like, is there a way to, to really make that, that is, like make smart decisions in your incentives beforehand? Um, you mean incentives for, for the bakers, for yes, the potential exactly. bakers? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, the, the key is communication, you know, is the communication with your bakers. Uh, we, um, and we use that really well. When we started, we started to communicate with our bakers and started to get feedback and we got a lot of great ideas from the bakers themselves. Mm. So basically, we even changed our strategy that we were using. We even changed our product during the campaign to make it uh, as customizable as possible to the needs of bakers. Yeah. So this is really key. And we came up with the final product that really everybody wanted, like mm. with their color uh, color side, with their functionality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what we're doing, we're just sending a survey to the bakers and saying, what would you like to see in our in our campaign? And uh, and we got so many great ideas that we even like pivoted from our ones that we had before and shifted to the ones that we got from bakers because they were like uh, coming from the right uh, audience audience itself. Right. Uh, yeah. And and this way we we uh, created a really good product and something that people really wanted. So uh, yeah. And and basically it, it was that. So the key is communication is is understanding your uh, your target audience what it wants, uh, and if you really understand like what basically your customer wants, your bakers want, uh, you can create incentives. You can create product that is really uh, demandable and uh, really people want. Right. So in that, I mean, this might this might be a silly question, but when you when you start you know taking surveys and things like that, like. Um, how do you, how do you then like adjust your, you know, like the original video, the landing page video and all that stuff? Like you don't, you don't do, are those shifts that you're changing? Are they more to those like incentives to backers? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So what we did is that we didn't change our original video, but we, uh, introduced another videos like on the Uh, page. Okay. Yeah. We introduced another videos, like, uh, we tried to keep the communication as much as possible, and uh, we uh, we openly said that you know we like uh, like for example we were first we were thinking that this wallet should be only brown, but uh, based on your feedbacks we decided to provide also the black option, mm. and we we see that people really want that and re- they become excited that we also took this 
decision based on their feedback. Right. And uh, yeah, so this is this is really good to keep the communication with your bakers and not address them as customers, but address them as a team members. So basically, you are one big team and you are bringing a really good innovation to life. So uh, and when they feel that 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 you are like communicating with them not as a customer but as a team member. They become much more engaged in your campaign. They share it openly. They invite their friends. Uh, and, and imagine you suddenly like uh, have a team of more than 1,000 people. So uh, they, they all are interested to helping you out, to bring you good ideas, to share your campaigns. And uh, you are getting the snowball effect. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That That's such a... Uh... A crazy good perspective change on the whole on the whole thing, you know. Thinking of them less as less as your customer and more as your teammate, I think that is genius. Um, so I have one one final question for you. Um, if you could give one piece of advice to someone starting their first crowdfunding campaign, um, never done it before, uh, what would you say? Um, yeah, I would have many advices, but okay. uh, the first, the, the key, the key is to start from the product. I think mm. to do research, uh, a good research on the product itself, because there are products which uh, which don't do well on crowdfunding, and despite of of your marketing skills, it, it just uh, people just don't want it. Yeah, this is something that people don't want it. So I right. advise you, advise uh, people who start to go to crowd crowdfunding to first pay attention on their product, on the functionality, on the design, on the competition aspects, uh, making sure that there is an audience in in Kickstarter or, or or in Indiegogo for their product. They can see similar campaigns and basically get an idea about that. And then after that, after they feel that their product is uh, is really demandable and there's really an audience for their product. The next thing is the preparation. So they, they need to prepare. They need to start collecting subscribers. And basically, it will take some time for them uh, to get ready for the campaign. Okay. It is hard, but the, uh, but the good thing is that uh, it's doable. So, uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you take into account uh, everything, uh, it's very much possible. And this is a great place to be. Yes, absolutely. Well, um so where should where should people find you? I think you're you're the guy who uh, who's kind of leading a leader in this space. So so where where would you want people to come check out your stuff? Um, I have my website uh, blog and where I also share some tips uh, and advice in the crowdfundingformula.com. Okay. Uh, yeah, basically people can find a lot of uh, a lot of articles and a lot of advice in there, which will help them also to prepare well. And they can contact me if, if uh, any question. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, man. I mean, this I know the interview is short, but I think it's packed full of valuable information and packed full of gold that I'm excited to uh, implement for my next campaign. So I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Thanks again for having me. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. That was our interview with Narek Vardanyan. Man, he is full of incredible knowledge in the crowdfunding space. So we have made sure to provide all the links to his stuff in the show notes. So make sure to go follow him and his work today. This podcast is made by Gadget Flow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to keep an eye on our site for all the new products we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another episode. So in the meantime, please go rate and review our show on iTunes. Again, thank you so much for listening to the Gadget Flow podcast.